Everyone is clairvoyant. Everyone is psychic. Everyone is intuitive. But not everyone has tapped into it. This is Holly Hall from AskHollyHall.com. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you how you can tap into the mind's eye, the ears, the heart, and be able to use your intuition on an everyday basis. This doesn't mean that you have to go around reading for people or become a clairvoyant coach like I am, but I'm going to tell you a story. I have a client and her name is Marissa. Marissa lives in the United States near Colorado. She works in hospice. So she works with people who are dying, who are passing away. She's always had an affinity for this because she lived with her grandmother and her grandmother had passed away and was ailing just before she had passed away. And Marissa was 25. Imagine she grew up with her grandmother. She never knew her mother. Her grandmother was her mother. So this began the calling, the destiny of her life. Yes, many times tragedy which is always attached to bliss in most cases. It means you were happy at one time and something took that away, right? Always ends up showing you clearly what your destiny is in this lifetime. So Marissa, at the age of 25, 26, entered into school, got her nursing, and is now in palliative care. But she found that her feelings were being shut down. She wasn't able to find love. She wasn't able to find a partner to live her life with. And so at age 32, she came to me. She is now 36. I have been coaching Marissa for four years. And my type of coaching is like a therapy as well. So what I have retaught her, rekindled within her, is to get in touch back with her heart, the heart that was there when she lived with grandma, the heart that was there when she cared for grandma near the end, the heart that is still there in the memories when she remembers how much her grandmother loved her. We It took us well over a year while she went through a soul rebirthing transition. And she recaptured the emotions and the feelings. And instead of resisting the emotions of the feelings when she was in palliative care and she witnessed loved ones losing their loved ones, she shut down. But now she feels with them. She doesn't feel for them. That's painful when you feel for somebody. But when you feel with them, when you sit with them in that solace, in that understanding, nothing needs to be said. There's an energetic connection that somebody is here with me. And I don't have to speak a word to explain myself, to say sorry, to apologize. And this is what she does now. So beyond her nursing qualifications, what she does intuitively, tapping into empathetically, with every single patient and every single loved one of that patient far supersedes her nursing diploma. It is the most joyful part of her life. Because her heart centered is now opened up, she has found love. She is in a relationship and pregnant with her first child. Oh, don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean it didn't, doesn't come with ups and downs. I still coach her with understanding that she has married someone whose feelings are also shut down. This can be very challenging in a relationship. But you see, often we attract our students. Often we become their teachers. And this is what she's done with her partner. So there are some challenges, but she realizes through her teachings and her wisdom 
while being coached therapeutically and intuitively, psychically with me, that this is yet another notch on her belt towards her soul evolution. And her husband is willing to go on that journey. He's just in the process of learning. So how can you do this? How can you tap into that deep intuition? So the first thing we're going to explain to you on a very psychological level, because remember, I have a background in psychology. In fact, I'm continuing some of my courses right now in that. Your brain is a projector. Okay, I'm talking science. I'm talking biology. I'm talking physics. We're getting real here. Your brain is only a projector. And what it does, and so are your eyes, and so are your ears. Okay, so just like watching a movie, your brain is taking in what you see and what you hear. It is imposing it onto a screen. And then it is projecting it out to your environment. Okay, and we've got two parts of the brain, main parts of the brain that are being projected. Okay, one is the frontal lobe, that's your conscious area. And that conscious area is trying to decide what to do in every given situation. I'm being trapped because in, in my car because there's somebody slowly moving in front of me who can't drive fast enough. Do I honk my horn and flip my finger? Do I patiently, patiently wait in meditation? Right? Or when you're standing in line, and there's somebody in front of you who's cut you off. How are you going to respond to that? That's what your frontal lobe does. Okay. And then there's your sensory areas. And that's in the back of your brain. And that area decides how it's going to emotionally respond to that area. How is it emotionally going to respond? Emotionally, I'm angry and I want to flip the bird. I want to tell this person to get lost. He's a jerk. She's a jerk. Right? Or the other side of the emotion may say, well, that's mean. That's not nice. You're a good girl. Don't do that. Okay? So there is also your subconscious side. And your subconscious side already knows the answer. There is a six or seven, I think it's a seven second. And within seven seconds, your, sub, your subconscious relays what it wants to do to your conscious mind. And then your conscious mind responds accordingly. But what if your conscious mind responds before it gets that seven seconds? Seven seconds can be a long time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. That long before your frontal lobe, before your conscious mind gets the message of what your conscious mind is. So what if you have a knee-jerk reaction because ego says to flip the bird? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my gosh, why did I flip the bird? That is not what I do. Holly, you are a spiritual human being. Why do you flip the bird? You're going to feel guilty all day because you were mean to somebody who may have accidentally cut you off. <gasps> right? So, what if you could tap into that? Not wait seven seconds. What if you could tap into that subconscious immediately and get the answer? Because the subconscious already knows it, right? You can, but you have to quiet the mind. And that is why there's the old adage of count to 10 before you react. Pause, breathe, sit with it. 
That doesn't mean you ignore your anger. That doesn't mean you ignore your excitement. That doesn't mean you ignore parts of you that wants to immediately respond to any given situation. But you can still sit with it. Witness. Witness the movie. Listen to the movie. Feel the feelings that is in that movie, that projection that is in your brain right now. The more often that you do this, and that this is without a doubt, especially if you can give yourself 21 days, this is proven that it takes 21 days to change a habit or develop a new habit. So if you can witness yourself, then you will become extremely intuitive. Like I said, you don't have to do what I do, where you're sitting. This is what I do for a living, right? My job is to listen to people, intuitively pick up and get answers from source, from subconscious, from from what I do with astrology, you know, there's all different reasons, but you can use this every single day to help you solve your own problems, to get ahead, to manifest, to create abundance, to take advantage of every given situation. And there is an advantage to be taken from negative, so-called negative situations. Always. The opportunity is always there. Now, I was just talking about the concepts and the construct of the brain. But then we have the heart. We have the heart center. And in that heart center, you can open that up as well. Many people nowadays, their heart center is closed down. Why? Because we have been desensitized. How have we been desensitized? By movies, commercials, songs, the news. We have learned to shut down emotionally because it's just too much. Energetically, the energetic field around planet Earth. This is also, physicists are watching this energetic field. Okay, it's a real thing. Okay, yes, it is a thing. And the energetic field is at a faster pace. It is more condensed and it's moving faster than it ever has since they began studying it. The energetic field changed just before 9-11 happened. They looked back at the records. I'm not sure what devices they use, but there's machinery that is calibrating or calculating this energetic field. And something like 10 minutes before 9-11 happened, the entire energetic field around planet Earth changed. Imagine that. Look at what everything is happening around our planet right now. It's hard on us, right? So we're shutting down, but we can open it up because there's so many wonderful, beautiful, amazing things happening in tandem. Because of these tragedies, people are stepping up. They're coming to heal. They're coming to help. There's palliative care out there in many forms. And so you can be like Marissa. You can find that. Start practicing today. I challenge you. Namaste.